In our video notes today, we're going to be looking at the work done by both the force of gravity and the force of friction by considering two different scenarios with a moving box. So first of all, consider a situation to the right here where a box is dropped from rest. It starts with an initial velocity of zero. It's dropped to a final height of zero meters, and we're going to assume that air resistance is negligible. So we think about at position A, uh, we're going to also define the, the system as both the box and the earth. So does the box and or the earth store any energy at position A? Well, the box is above a position, a vertical position of zero. So there must be some energy stored as gravitational potential energy. There's no springs involved, so there's no spring potential energy. And at position A, the box isn't moving, so there can't be any kinetic energy. What about at position B? At position B, the box is down to a height of zero, so there's no gravitational potential energy. Again, there's no spring potential energy. Because air resistance is negligible, things aren't heating up, there's no increase in thermal energy in either the box or the air, but the box is moving, so it's going to have some energy stored in the kinetic energy account. If there are no external forces involved in this situation, there's no positive or negative work done, then if we look at the energy conservation equation for this scenario, we have the gravitational energy at part A, where at position A is equal to the kinetic energy stored at position B. That would be our energy conservation equation. Now let's look and see what happens if we say that the system is only the box. We take out the Earth from the system. Well, at position A, does the box alone have any stored energy in the gravitational potential energy account? The answer is no, because you need to have the Earth and the box collectively. They store the energy. So at position A, the box isn't moving, and it doesn't have any gravitational potential energy. And so at position A, the box system has no energy stored. At position B, the box is moving, so it does have to have kinetic energy. So how did the box get kinetic energy from position A to position B? Well, energy must have been transferred into it. That means work must have been done. Positive work must have been done. The only way that happens, if there's an external force on the box, that the box feels in the same direction it's displaced. Well, what would that be? Well, there is a significant force, the force of gravity. If we take the Earth out of the system, now the force of gravity is an external force. And we'd say that there's positive work being done on the box by that external force of gravity equal to the amount of kinetic energy that it gained. So if we look at the energy conservation equation here, we have no energy in the beginning plus the positive work done by gravity is equal to the kinetic energy stored at position B. If we substitute in our equation for work, work is force times distance times the cosine of theta. What force is that? That's the force of gravity on the box. D would be the change in Y, how much the box changed vertical position. And what would theta be here? Well, the box is being displaced in the negative Y direction. The force of gravity is in the exact same direction, the negative Y direction. So the angle between the force of gravity and the displacement of the box is zero. Cosine of zero is just one. So that cosine term goes away. And so we can say that in the end that the force of gravity is doing positive work. The force of gravity times the distance the box has moved, which is the same as delta y, is equal to 1 half mvb squared, v being the velocity the box has at position v. So this would be a, a slightly expanded form of our energy conservation equation. In this case, gravity is doing positive work if gravity is an external force on the system. Let's think about a similar situation with uh, the idea of friction and work. So initially, let's consider a situation where there's a box moving with some velocity is greater than zero at position A, and it just naturally slides across, or across a rough surface, so it's slowed by the force of friction to rest over some distance d or some displacement d. Well, if we consider the system as both the box and the surface, what, what's going on in terms of energy well, in the beginning, it's moving, so there must be some stored energy in the kinetic energy account. It's at a height of zero. I guess we have to say that let's assume the floor is at a height of zero, so there's no stored energy in the gravitational potential energy account, and there's nothing that's compressed or stretched that would have energy stored as spring potential energy. 
Well, in the end, it's not moving. It comes to rest at position B. So there's no more kinetic energy. All of that energy, <clears throat> when there's two surfaces that slide against one of the, they're both going to heat up. And we say that the, the molecules inside of there are bouncing more vigorously inside. And so that we call that uh, there's energy stored in the thermal energy account. So when you look at the energy conservation equation, you just get that the kinetic energy the box has at position A is all transferred or equal to the, the amount of thermal energy stored by the box and the surface together. Well, let's, again, let's think about, well, what if we changed our system definition? Let's say that our system was just the box. Like, what would an energy bar chart look like if the system was just defined as the box? Same situation here. So in the beginning, the box is going to have energy stored in the kinetic energy account. But if we take the, the surface out of the system, we're gonna, let's just, um, for argument's sake, let's just assume the box doesn't heat up while it slows down. Um, there's no kinetic energy. Let's say there's no thermal energy. So in the end, the box system has no energy stored in any of its energy accounts that we're kind of looking for right here. Kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, spring potential energy, or thermal energy. Well, if the box had energy stored in the beginning and there's none in the end, that must, have, that must mean energy was transferred out of the system. So work was done, specifically negative work. So what was the force outside of the box system doing negative work on it? Well, that force can be friction because the surface is no longer inside the system. So there was negative work done on the box by the force of friction. And why do we can't say that it's negative work? outside of the fact that there's energy being transferred out of the box system. Well, remember, we define negative work is when an object is being displaced in a particular direction. In this case, the box is moving to the right, and it's feeling a force in the exact opposite direction to the left. And so we'd say that energy is being transferred out, and there's negative work being done. So if we look at the energy conservation equation sheet for the second scenario, where only the box is a part of the system, we get that the initial kinetic energy plus the minus work done equals zero. So if we add <clears throat> the work done on the box by friction to both sides, we just see that the initial kinetic energy is equal to the amount of work done on the box. Two sides is negative. And if we substitute in um, our equation for kinetic energy to kind of expand this out a little bit, we get that it's a one half mv mv squared, the velocity at position a squared. So this would tell us how much kinetic energy it had is equal to uh, work. Remember, is force times distance times cosine of theta. In this case, theta is 180 degrees because the displacement and the force are exactly opposite directions but parallel. Cosine of 180 degrees is, is a negative one. But here we're just looking at, I guess, the magnitude of the work done. So we have uh, the force of friction times the distance. So if we want to think about, if we want to use energy considerations to solve a problem, and we want to somehow either use a known force of friction, or if we want to calculate the size of the frictional force, and we're trying to use energy to think about a problem, we want to make sure that friction, we define our system so that friction is considered an external force. So like in this case, friction is doing negative work. And in our conservation equation sheet, then we can put in a uh, work symbol in there or a variable and substitute in force times distance and that external force is the force of friction. So that allows us to get a, a force of friction term in our equation, our energy conservation equation, to either use that value in some way or to solve for that value. So hopefully this will be helpful as you guys work through your next assignment.